To say people in Pennsylvania have been on edge is an understatement. The urgent manhunt tonight for a convicted murderer who escaped from a prison in suburban Philadelphia. For 13 days, they've been faced with the very real scenario that they may cross paths with a fugitive, a murderer who stabbed his girlfriend 38 times. Now hundreds of local and state police are working with the U.S. Marshals to try to track him down. Danilo Cavalcante escaped from prison nearly two weeks ago. Police described him as desperate and dangerous. Another night of a cat and mouse game with convicted killer Danilo Cavalcante. But on day 14 of the manhunt, it all came to a very sudden end. Shortly after 8 a.m., our suspect was captured. The scale of the hunt was broad. We're talking hundreds of law enforcement officers, drones, schools were forced to close temporarily. Where students and staff are being told to stay home tomorrow. I hope they get them. I have a, a 10 year old and a 13 year old. Um, this is a very, very quiet community. And yet somehow, Cavalcante was able to hide from all of those officers in plain sight for so long. How did he do it? And how did we get from this brazen escape to this very public return to prison? During the 14-day hunt for Cavalcante, police actually got pretty close to capturing him over and over again. Police say Cavalcante slipped through a nearby perimeter, but believe he's still lurking nearby. They found shoes that they believe belonged to Cavalcante. He was spotted multiple times by backyard cameras, eyewitnesses. There was very much a trail for police to follow while he was on the move. He just didn't stop moving. So by the time police heard about and could respond to a sighting, it was already too late. Ryan Drummond claims he saw Danilo Cavalcante, convicted killer on the run from Chester County Prison for five days now inside of his home. He also managed to slip through police search perimeters, even changed his appearance. The U.S. Marshals just released these images showing convicted murderer Danilo Cavalcante clean shaven now and wearing a hoodie with a hat. And when authorities say he hid in plain sight, they mean it. He even showed up at the doorsteps of people he knew years ago and stole a firearm. He grabbed a 22 rifle that was leaning in the corner of the garage. The homeowner drew a pistol and fired at Cavalcante as he fled with the rifle. In all, he covered about 90 kilometers while on the run. He managed to find a backpack and a duffel bag, gathering what he needed to survive along the way. He's a resourceful individual. Uh, I believe that he's a desperate individual. Um, the terrain that he was in, that was kind of his home turf. He was in the jungle, uh, very similar to the jungle where he grew up in Brazil. Um, he knew how to manipulate the environment to his advantage. And despite all those sightings, he slipped through the fingers of about 500 law enforcement officers, helicopters, dogs, even the FBI and U.S. Border Patrol got involved. Now, Cavalcante did have some natural advantages. Some of the technology that's typically used in a search like this, looking for body temperature signals, is hindered by the weather, of course. It is just too hot for choppers to be able to pick something like that up. He also had another edge, experience. Cavalcante had been on the run before. In 2017, he disappeared into the Brazilian wilderness, police wanting to arrest him for a different murder. Back then, according to the New York Times, Cavalcante was hiding out in the rural outskirts of a small town on a sprawling cattle ranch. Dusty, remote, stretching out for kilometers, very little shelter, battling the elements. And he did this for several weeks. One longtime resident said Cavalcante was at ease in this kind of terrain. When you're used to the ranch, you know how to hide. He spent a lot of time in the bush. Fast forward to now, and the nearly two weeks he spent mainly in wooded areas and around small suburban towns, presumably with very little food and water. Here's what Cavalcante's mother had to say to the New York Times. His training was his suffering. It was going to sleep hungry. It was waking up as I wondered what to feed them. What we have, we fought to get. It's not surprising to me that he's able to, to last out there. The whole goal here is not a, a contest of how much can you take out there. It's how much can we stress you, how much can we push you, that you make a mistake and we capture you.
We begin this morning with breaking news. Pennsylvania State Police say a two-week manhunt for an escaped prisoner is over. The final capture was a chain reaction of things. A home alarm goes off in the middle of the night. A drug enforcement agency aircraft with thermal imaging responds, picks up Cavalcante's heat signature. A ground team moves in and circles him. They send in a dog. They had the element of surprise. Cavalcante did not realize he was surrounded until that had occurred. He continued to resist, but was uh, forcibly taken into custody. And just like that, a two-week hunt ends in an interaction that lasts minutes. No shots fired. We watched him basically walk him up. One um, camouflage trooper had his gun, his rifle, and then they were walking him up. It's a huge sigh of relief. It's the place, you know, we're used to. It's home. It's quiet again. It's serene. Everyone can just exhale finally. Police say Cavalcante has a dog bite wound, but nothing more serious than that. He'll get medical attention, then back behind bars to finish serving his life sentence.